Hi everyone, I'm Ian Clifton and I'm an Android Developer Relations Engineer. Thinking about accessibility is critical for developing a quality app on Android TV OS, but a lot of developers don't know where to start. I'm going to cover some of the most common issues and how to fix them, as well as discuss handling some more complex scenarios. For TV apps, we're typically thinking about a relaxed 10-foot experience, so we prefer big, simple controls and ensure that navigating is easy with the D-pad. While this already helps with accessibility, TV apps also tend to rely heavily on visuals, which can create barriers to accessibility. Fortunately, Android has accessibility services built in, and the framework does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. For example, a user who is visually impaired or who can't read might rely on TalkBack, a screen reader that audibly announces what's in focus on the screen. If you're using regular Android views, such as a text view or a button, TalkBack will announce that content for you based on what text is set up for those views. But what happens if you have image views where Android doesn't know the meaning of what's displayed? Unlabeled button. Press select to activate. Unlabeled button. Unlabeled button. Unlabeled button. Press select to activate. Ooh, that's pretty painful. To solve this problem, you can set the view's content description, which will be read out by TalkBack. This description should be short and shouldn't include anything like button or checked because TalkBack understands the type and state of built-in views. Don't forget that you should also localize content descriptions, so don't hard code any strings. With just this minor change, the app becomes much more accessible. Cupcake button. Press select to activate. Donut button. Eclair button. Froyo button. Press select to activate. If a view is just there for visuals and doesn't convey important information, you can set important for accessibility to no. For example, gradients and shadows aren't useful to have TalkBack announce. TalkBack will avoid focusing on those unimportant elements, making it easier to use your app. Another helpful thing to do is to identify the labels for forms so that TalkBack knows which views go together. It's common to have an text view saying what a nearby edit text is for. And by setting the label for attribute on the text view, you can set the ID of the related edit text. Colors are also important for accessibility. Make sure that you never use just color as an indicator. A common mistake is to change a visual indicator between red and green, but there are a lot of people who aren't able to easily distinguish those hues. Adding a text label that changes from off to on or an X that changes to a check mark can benefit all your users. Similar to colors, contrast is really important for accessibility. A general guideline is that text that is smaller than 18 SP or bold and smaller than 14 SP needs to have a contrast ratio of at least four and a half to one. All other text should have a contrast ratio of at least three to one. You should also consider these guidelines for other important visuals, uh, such as icons. App designs need to consider not only potential visual impairments, but also that environmental factors play a role. Some TV panels have better color reproduction than others. Some users will be watching TV in the daytime with a lot of glare. When in doubt, prefer extra contrast. Before we move on entirely from text, it's worth reminding everyone, Use SP for text sizes. That's a general accessibility recommendation in Android, but it's especially important now that text scaling options are available for TV users in Android 12. Fortunately, even if you don't have a TV device running Android 12, you can set the text scale by running the put system font scale ADB command. That's a great way to test your app for text scaling as well as possible lifecycle issues when activities and fragments are recreated. Okay, let's recap. If you use regular Android views, uh, set your content descriptions, and follow best practices for visuals, then your app will be significantly more accessible. But 
what if you need to use a completely custom view or you draw with OpenGL? Android doesn't know the meaning of what's on the screen in those cases. Fortunately, you can implement the Explore by Touch helper from Android X to tell the system about what's on the screen. Even though it's called the Explore by Touch helper, it's useful for custom views on TV that users interact with using a D-pad. Before we dive into the code, it's good to have a mental model of how this works. For example, if you have a custom view that's drawing a row of video thumbnails, that just looks like one view to Android. But the system needs to know how to move accessibility focus from thumbnail to thumbnail. This is where the concept of virtual views comes in. A virtual view has three important parts. It has an ID, which should be a stable positive integer. It has a rectangle to represent its position on the screen. And it has an accessibility node info, which contains all the important information for accessibility, like the content description or whether it can be clicked. Now that we've discussed what a virtual view is, let's implement an Explore by Touch helper. It requires a view, so it's common to pass in your custom view as the single constructor argument. There are four important methods. First, get virtual view at takes x and y screen coordinates and needs to return the ID for the virtual view at that position. If there isn't one, return invalid underscore ID. Second, get visible virtual views receives a list of integers that should be populated with the IDs of all virtual views that are currently visible on the screen. The IDs should be added directly to the list in the order of accessibility traversal. Third, on populate node for virtual view is where the accessibility node info should be populated. Explore by touch helper has a method called create node for child, which populates the accessibility node info with sensible defaults like uh, this is enabled, it's focusable and visible to the user. You must set a content description and it should follow the same rules as just a regular views content description. Keep it short and to the point and don't forget to localize it. You should also set the class name, which TalkBack will use to identify the virtual view for the user. This should be set to the Android view that's most similar to what your virtual view represents. So text would be a text view, an image would be an image view, a button would be a button, etc. If this node should handle actions such as a click, they can be specified with the add action method. That lets the accessibility services tell the user what actions can be formed with an announcement such as click to activate. Finally, you must set the bounds for the node. If you're using version 1.1 or below of the Android X custom view library, you'll have to set this with the deprecated set bounds in parent method. In the upcoming 1.2 releases, you can use the new set bounds in screen from bounds in parent method instead. Depending on your use case, there's a lot of other options, so be sure to read the class documentation for more info. Finally, there's the onPerformAction for virtual view method. This method is called whenever an action that you specified in onPopulateNode for virtual view is performed. These method names are a bit of a mouthful, but the method we were just talking about populates what actions can be handled and this method is for handling the action when it happens. In most cases, this will involve triggering a method on the view. When your custom view changes, you should send an accessibility event to notify the system of the change. For example, um, imagine you have a custom slider that lets the user control playback speed. Pressing left on the D-pad decreases the speed and updates the UI to show the new speed. If the code handling the key press is in the view class, it can directly call send accessibility event. Code in other places can use the accessibility manager's send accessibility event. It can feel like a lot of work to make custom views more accessible, but breaking it down into smaller pieces makes it less daunting. We've covered the four most important methods for Explore by Touch Helper. Get virtual view at to return a virtual view ID for the given coordinates, get visible virtual views 
to add the virtual view IDs that are visible to the past list, unpopulate node for a virtual view to set the accessibility node info for a virtual view, and onPerform action for a virtual view to respond to the interactions with a virtual view. In addition, the send accessibility event method is used to tell the system about changes, such as if you've changed the text in your custom view. To learn more about accessibility for TV apps, see our accessibility docs. They have a lot of additional info about best practices, evaluating apps with talkback, uh, supporting system caption settings, and more. We also have accessibility demos in our GitHub repository. Go to the TV samples repository and select the accessibility demo project. It covers standard Android components, um, support for custom views using both uh, Explore by Touch Helper and Accessibility Node Provider. Uh, the project also shows how to make web view content accessible when it's programmatically created with JavaScript. If there's one thing to take away from this video, it's that you should turn on TalkBack and try it out. You may end up catching issues you didn't even think about, such as if your playback controls fade while they're still being announced by TalkBack. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Android app development.